Okay, Joe, we've got your match here from the European Masters. This is the one that you wanted me to have a look at. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get stuck in. So we start off with a double guard pull position. The guy comes up on top. So we're entering into our single leg X, and then he begins to pass around, being quite explosive right at the start of the match. Uh, this is a moment where we want to start to slow him down a little bit. Single leg X is a harder position to slow people down in, and your X guard and things, unless we start wrapping the lapel guard. Now, one thing that is uh, clear here is that he's trying to squash this knee towards the floor. So he's, he's elevating your hip, stacking his knee. And then his foot here is slowly coming away from your shoulders. So he's trying to drive this knee towards the ground and bringing this foot away from uh, away from your armpit. Really sort of getting rid of that um, foot lock grip that you have in a tight position for you to be then start to sweep. Um, think about as soon as you feel this position, switch into an underhook grip to elevate him and then start to move from there. This right foot wants to be inside the legs, you see, because what ends up happening is he advances through towards the half guard, which doesn't seem to be a problem because you, you seem to like the half anyway. But if we can avoid it, we want that foot in the middle of the legs. You see, right at the beginning here, we've got this foot on the outside, this heel locked into his hip. We want to be underhooking this leg, pulling it up onto your shoulder, and then stiff arming him away so we have the ability to score your sweeps and start coming up on top, ready to work your guard pass and already be two points ahead. So instead, we're stuck, and he drives into the half guard from here, bringing his knee towards the ground. We start off with a good attempt at an underhook, but then he pummels back in. So we have this arm underneath, he get to a good position, he gets this elbow back inside. We really want to fight for that, get, get that underhook a little bit lower, sort of around the belt on the far side, come up onto that left elbow, start entering underneath his hips and coming into your deep half guard scenario, so getting a little bit closer to him. The moment he starts driving up on his knee and bringing his forehead in, we're starting to get into trouble, but here's a nice guard recovery, centering the feet back to the hips. Uh, he's going to pass off of this, but the issue here is that your foot wasn't on his hip, you see? So then he's able to start passing around and coming through to put pressure on your guard. We do a good job of recovering again, but then he does a really good job of passing around towards this side. So let's look at that sequence one more time. You recover from this attempt at a knee slice. So you've got a good knee shield on the way, recovering this left leg and stepping back into the hip. But instead of stepping in the hip, the foot is just short of his hip. So as we get to here, let's slow this down so we can see a little bit better. Let's take this to 0.75. Okay, so we're in position. He hits a knee slice. You use your frame to come back. We have a cross sleeve grip and then uh, a, a cross collar grip and a sleeve here. Now, when we're in this right foot on the bicep, this left foot is sort of nowhere. See how he's controlling it? We want to shoot that past the hip when you recover rather than just on top of the hip. So then he's able to start passing in towards this direction, putting you under threat. So you've got a block, recover your feet back to the hips again, and then he passes around to the other side. Again, advancing past your knee line, you see? So now we're framing on the hips. We're trying to circle this left leg over. Correct thing to do for you to recover. Uh, we just had to recover a little bit better on your left side and shoot that left leg past the hip rather than on top of it so he can't back up and then begin Toriandoing again. So he walks around towards your head. Hits a top spin, lands in the neon belly. This is a perfect opportunity for you to move into 50-50. And the 50-50 guard will work very well with everything that you're playing already, the single leg XX guard uh, and the deep half guard. It's going to be when against somebody like this that has a very good balance and good pressure on top of you will allow you to sweep them a little bit easier because of the lack of understanding in the position. So right now, all we have to do is pass this left foot here inside his legs. Usually if I'm going towards the 50-50 or I'm entering into the legs at the beginning, I will put this foot all the way through with my instep hooking onto his quad on this leg as opposed to going straight into 50-50. Um, but we need to bump him first while he's got knee pressure. So your right hand's gone perfectly behind this hamstring. We start to step the leg over. Now's your chance to come through and then he stacks up. So he's putting a lot of weight on you here. If we just recenter your hip, so start to bring your hip around in this direction here, then this foot will uh, carry through towards his hip and you'll be in 50-50. What ends up happening is he does a good job of putting a lot of pressure on the back of your head, putting your weight into your shoulders, and then advancing round into sort of like a leg drag 50-0 position over here. 
Once we get to here, you really got to force this foot and straighten his leg out to use your calf to push against his in the lower part of his ribs against this belt line. Pull his ankle uh, by his heel up and over towards the other side of your body. It does have a collar grip, so it will be hard, but it, you'll be able to get that leg across. Now, there is another point from here. As you're coming through, he's beginning to stack. We can start to spin through to enter into the legs, or we could literally just pull that foot straight across now before uh, transitioning to uh, before him transitioning into this leg drag position. So we want to uh, eventually, if we come back a stage, as we were here, he steps over your head. We have this underhook grip here, which is fine as you pass the leg inside, but for the entering into the 50-50, you want to switch that to a footlock grip instead. That would make it a lot easier for you to begin to uh, recover back to guard. Let's come back to normal, normal playback speed. So yeah, here we've got to grab onto that heel with two hands, bring it straight across your body so that we can prevent the, the pressure of the pass. He's just scored his second advantage now, so we've got one advantage for his double guard pull, uh, second for almost passing your guard, and now we're starting to recover. We do a good job here because that was a real bad spot to get, get out from. He's again putting pressure into pass. We circle that leg over, good guard recovery. He's putting a lot of pressure with that knee back in. Again, another potential opportunity to come back to 50-50 here. Anytime, especially when people are coming up to a neon belly type situation, you have the ability to invert, and uh, it's essentially the Braulio knee bar entry, but obviously you would use it to go to the leg, leg attack instead, and move into the 50-50. So we get back to a similar scenario. He's putting lots of pressure on. We have your legs sort of crisscrossed while we're trying to recover. And from here, we need to be opening this left knee here. So he, does a, he gets a little bit hasty, tries to mount over the top, and then you're already in perfect position back into your single leg X. But while we are crushed, in these situations where your feet are crossed over either side, you want to start to open your knees out in opposite directions. So, so your feet are on the opposite sides, but then your knees are squashed together and then you're in a bad spot. So you need to open both knees either side, use those as your frames to coincide with your hands. So your left hand will be blocking this shoulder as opposed to the far shoulder. Right hand will be blocking the bicep to prevent him from going towards your head. And then you can use that left knee to open out towards this shoulder again. So left knee towards his right shoulder. That will give you the ability to frame him away and push him off uh, instead of just uh, him putting so much pressure on you right now. But as I say, you do a great job catching him back here in the single leg X. Now we're into this same scenario. You see how he's constantly retracting this foot. This is why he feels so heavy because you're not directly underneath his hips. He's starting to bring his knee towards the ground instead. Uh, so we need think measures to be able to elevate him with any single leg X, any X guard positioning. The reason it works so well is because of your hips being underneath his. So you have the ability to maneuver him either direction. When he's taking his feet away from your armpits, or he's, he's starting to retract his toes, he's now moving his hips back and making himself a lot heavier. So it's much more difficult for you to move him in either direction. So we need to be uh, switching into sort of a shallow X guard. This left foot needs to be on his right hip, so the near side hip, to be able to push him up and away from you. Uh, but on the same hand, we need to work into moving his direction towards uh, away from you. So this is the same scenario from the beginning. He's retracting this, uh, his right leg. Your right hand needs to go behind this armpit and framing him over here. So he puts his weight into his hands instead. And then we can start picking this foot up and transition his weight across with just a basic uh, tackle stand-up sweep. He's threatening a cross choke. There's nothing that's really going to uh, get any damage going or work to a submission at this point. Just a little bit annoying. Um, but again, it's, it's just stopping you from progressing any further. So as I say, this right hand wants to go behind this armpit, move his weight into his left knee to make this right leg lighter, and then you have the ability to pull it up onto your shoulder and start working to your sweeps. Uh, I also spoke about the lapel guard earlier, the, the variations. Ah. Nice entry back into the X card, exactly. Now that you've got this foot underneath his hips, uh, right now it's on the far thigh. If you go to the near side thigh, you're really gonna put a lot of pressure on this near side hip, and then you can work into uh, foot locks and everything else to bring his hips towards the ground. So we get into position, and I believe we catch this far ankle over here. 
which is great. Again, he's just sinking all of his weight down, being really heavy on your hooks. So we've got to constantly keep him moving. The sooner we sweep, the better in this scenario. Do a great job. We put his hips to the floor. We come up, and then we lose that leg. You see? At this point, this is the, the biggest problem in the match, and this is what stopped you from winning the fight, right? Because we end up losing 2-1 uh, on advantages. If we'd have kept hold of that ankle, we'd have been safe, ready to, to sweep and win the match. So once we're hitting this sweep over here, we've got to keep hold of that foot by any means. If you start to lose control of it with your left hand, switch your right-handed grip from his collar to his trouser. Because you must control the bottom leg. And this is a, a concept will come will come up in a lot of different positions, but all the time if you're playing X card, single leg X, you need to have control over the bottom leg. So next time, one, keep this right knee raised. You see? There are a whole load of potential triangles, arm bars that he could start to hit from basing up on this arm because your knee is not in the way. So you need to elevate that right knee almost in a combat base, just keeping that from, uh, from enclosing his guard on you and shooting up some submissions. Second thing is bring this right hand to his trouser because you must keep control over this leg. He's able to retreat, come up, and then we score an advantage from it. Hits a little uh, collar drag, and then we're back into guard. But right now, we are at 2-1 on advantages, and not a lot of time left. So we're back into our half guard. He's got a bottom collar grip on us, just keeping his hips away right now. So we could look at recentering his weight as well, moving towards a shin to shin with your right hook, just to put his put his knee back on the floor. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to play uh, your half guard and deep half guard game once he has his knee elevated. So I'd go shin to shin on your right foot and then extend him away to put his knee back on the ground. And then we have the ability to fight for the underhook or to um, start to off balance him. Come upon a nice attempt here at a single. And now we're underneath his hips. We're ready to come into your deep half guard. Great job there. I would probably go straight way to sweep. Because uh, now as soon as he starts retracting his hips, we need to get back underneath this leg. Now we end up doing a great job turning this into a uh, Lucas Leitch style uh, knee torsion sweep. So we've got a good grip. He's putting a lot of pressure. We've just lost the underhook. Now we're getting into some bad spots, but we put a lot of tension on this knee the more he tries to hit his knee slice. So we're doing a great job here, elevating the knees to the ceiling. From here, rather than raising the knee up, you almost need to preempt that at this level, people are able to defend by dropping this knee to the ground and straightening this leg. So we just want to use this as an entry back to the deep half guard again. Exactly. See how he switches his hips? So at this point... You come into position. We're already in a bad spot because we don't have the underhook, right? So as soon as you do enter to the deep half guard, we must get to a way to sweep position because we can't play deep half guard effectively with him controlling the underhook. So one, we need to pummel this back inside, but we do a great job putting tension on him to start to score the sweep. While this leg is raised, grab onto it with your right hand, pull his knee to your shoulder, and then he'll have to drop this knee to the ground and we'll come into a nice entry back into the deep half guard. Uh, what ends up happening is he, he flips his hips and we're back in position, but again, we don't have this underhook, so we can't follow up to a dogfight or anything else for us to continue these attacks. So now we think, okay, we'll come back out, recover back to more of a long distance style guard. So we move in, recover the right foot to the hip, come to lasso. Nice entry from there, but at that point, it's time. So potentially... A move that you would want to use earlier in the match is trying to then change up the game a little bit and come out to your lasso, or even start from that point. I know from the double guard pull, you were straight into the single leg X from the start. Um, but when we're, ha we're not having a lot of success with the current position that we're playing, we want to try to change it and uh, change the game come back to a different style of guard because he's obviously uh, very good at keeping his weight down and staying heavy on top of you uh, in your single leg X and your X guard. So we need to work on how to then put him in a position that he doesn't feel so comfortable. So then maybe your lasso would have been a little bit of a better option from there. Um, main points here, right at the start, I would try to wrap some lapels, uh, play some wormaconda or some lapelaconda from there. I'll, I'll go through on the videos because barely anybody knows what these lapel guard variations are. Um, 
So we have lapel guard introduced into your single leg X, so that we have some ability to prevent the pressure. Uh, two, moving into a shallow X guard, so elevating his hip off the ground, trying to stretch him up and take his weight off of that foot. And three of those 50-50 entries, so when he does get into scoring his guard passing, to come into position from there. Oh, and the last thing is your entry to the deep half guard, way to sweep position from uh, that Lucas Leitch style sweep that we hit at the end. But nice fight, it was good. What's up, Joe? Uh, we're going to start off with some Wernaconda, introduce you to this first. Uh, this is a pretty unknown guard for a lot of people. Um, so this is your, essentially the lapel guard from the single leg X, which will work really well in slowing down your opponents when you do get to these positions. Now, once I'm in the single leg X, I'm going to be opening the lapel on the far side, so far lapel. We're going to wrap that underneath your calf and through to the other hand. So I can drop my hips down to the floor. We pull this around, uh, bringing the slack out of the gi, passing underneath my knee to my calf to my left hand. Once I've got that, my right hand will come back to the collar grip, all on the same side, just so I can feed this lapel further through so that I can make a nice grip on the back of Sam's gi. So we grab on from here, I pull that through, again, breaking posture. At the same time, I'm gonna hip escape out towards you and then I karate chop on the back of Sam's knee so I get into position to lock up my Wemakonda. So again, my single leg X, we open this far lapel, relax the guard. All I'm doing is again, just making a foot lock grip here. I'm gonna open the lapel, wrap it underneath my knee and pass to my left hand. Just making a foot lock grip, not including my left leg. This gives me the ability to relax my hips now. My foot is glued in position by fixing the lapel to my calf. So it's hard for Sam to begin to backstep or to try to move into the mounted position from here because I have the lapel in order to prevent. Now, if this lapel is a little bit too short, we make a grip, pull the lapel through, hip escape onto your side, and then we karate chop on the back of the leg from here. So we're making this nice and tight grip from this point. Then the things that we're looking for here is making sure there's constant contact between my instep and my partner's hamstring, knee, butt, wherever I need to be hooking here, even when you do try to backstep here, Sam. So just lift the hips. See, I can follow. The more Sam tries to backstep, the more I have the ability to follow her over for the sweep as well. So we're into the position now, Joe. You have your lapel wrapped. Now what do we do once we're here? Ultimately, we're looking to sweep. Your Wemaconda is, again, just making sure you have a safer, a safer variation of your single leg X. And it also gives us a chance to move into uh, some leg locks and knee bars. We're specifically going to be using it for some basic sweeps. So the first thing is just essentially a advanced version of a tripod sweep. I have control over Sam's ankle already. I need to make sure I do keep hold of this because one of the main counters is her taking her heel away from me already and then trying to drive that knee towards the floor. So that's gonna put strain on my grip, ultimately break it, and then she can begin to sprawl around my guard. So I've gotta make sure that I keep attached to that ankle whether it's with my left hand, my elbow, my forearm, something to make sure she can't step back. And all we're gonna do from here is chop out this leg. Whether I use my calf to her heel or whether I push on the leg, it all depends on Sam's stance. So right now, we will just chop and lean forward. Again, my uh, pinky will flare outwards as my knee pushes against the inside of Sam's knee, creating this rotation here as we chop. Come up on top, once you're here, we release the lapel, let that go because now it's served its purpose. We've used it to get to the sweep. Again, it's just uh, using the position 
to try to maintain your guard for a little bit longer. So our second option, if some stance is wider, you see, and maybe I can't always get this connection with my uh, the bottom of my calf towards Sam's heel, then what I like to use what I call the Jean de Claude. So once I'm here, we're gonna step on the inside of the ankle, causing Sam's leg to go nice and wide, putting the weight into her heels, and again, creating the same tripod sweep. So we push on the inside of the ankle here, just making her off balance. Now all I'm gonna do is lean through this onto my forearm. Listen up, and coming up on top again. Releasing that lapel, coming back towards your collar grip, so we're ready to begin passing the guard. So, with most things, we're going to be working on opposite directions. So I'm either looking to sweep Sam backwards with the tripod seats we were just using, or she counters that by using her hips to come forward or essentially posting her hand on the ground, bringing her weight forward. Now it changes the position. I can no longer force the sweep in this direction. With most things, I don't want to force anything. I just want to react to my partner's movement. Now at this point, we're gonna create the momentum of bringing your knee back towards your chest and elevating this leg off the ground. At the same time, I'm just gonna swing that foot, uh, bringing Sam's hip towards the floor and then essentially backwards rolling with the sweep. Now, I always find that this works very well with action and reaction. So we're gonna start off with the first sweep and put the intention in first to really force her going uh, back to her hands. Now I lie back, engage my foot with the floor bring my knee to my chest and then I draw a circle with my right foot while I keep control over Sam's ankle. So I pull my knee to my chest, circle, and then all I'm doing is looking over my shoulder to back a draw, following up from the top for that sweep. So we're in position, Joe, we have the grip set up. Again, I start off with my action reaction. So I force the sweep in this direction, lie back, pull my knee to my chest, drawing a circle and completing the rollover from there. Now this sweep, especially the backwards roll sweep, can occur in two different scenarios. It's either going to be a force response or a, an opportunity. So when your partner tries to backstep in order to pass, like we demonstrated when I first showed you the worm, worm of Honda, uh, that's going to be your opportunity to follow your partner to the top position and essentially doing the same movement that we're doing right now. When they're trying to prevent the sweep by posting their hands on the floor, keeping the weight on top, transferring the weight through the knee, that is your opportunity to push forward and then force the sweep after by elevating your heel over your head and drawing the circle with your leg. 